Hello everyone and welcome back to Old Town on the Pennsylvania Burrowind. Today we're going to spend a little bit more time detailing the area uh, before moving down the line a little bit. And uh, I'm just trying to get this area finished up so that way we can move on to other parts of the layout. So you'll see right in the beginning here I'm trying to work on the town part, uh, detailing up, um, adding some driveways, some foliage, uh, things like that. Trying to bring this place to life a little bit more. One of my inspirations for this town is a little town in upstate New York called Old Forge. And uh, I know what you're thinking. I didn't name Old Town after Old Forge. Um, like I said, this is a rebuild of, a, of an old route, and this name was already uh, there. So uh, if you look on Google Earth, you'll see that Old Forge is very similar in that it's a very small town uh, centered around a railroad. And there's not really any division between the residential area, the downtown area, the industrial area, it's all pretty much just right there. So that's kind of what I was going for. One thing about trains is that it's a very static game. There's not a whole lot of life in it. And I spend a lot of time trying to add that life back into the game, make it feel lived in. I want it to feel that people are actually there, living there, going to work, going to school. We don't see people walking around on the street, and even the cars don't really have much meaning to them, aside from just being objects that move on the road. So by putting cars at parking lots, putting up these signs, um, spending time adding garbage on the side of the road, stuff like that, it makes it feel like that there's people actually living there, and that it's a real place in, in the real world, even though this is totally fictional. The technique that I really use when I'm detailing a route is to focus immediately on the area around the railroad tracks, because that's the area that we're going to be looking at the most, right? We're going to be running a train, we're going to be pretty much looking at the area right around the railroad tracks. So you want that area to be as detailed as possible. So I spend a lot of time detailing that, making it look as real as possible. And then I work my way out from there and go for less and less and less detail as we move further away from the railroad tracks, because those are areas that we're not going to see as much, we're not going to see it as often. Um, it really just needs to be there as a background object. Now I spent a lot of time with this McDonald's here. Originally there was a 7-Eleven, and uh, I, I didn't like it. It seemed out of place. I've never seen 7-Elevens in upstate New York, so I wanted to get rid of it. I thought it would be more fitting to put a fast food restaurant here, and I thought that this McDonald's was better. I kind of struggled between the two models, and I couldn't decide. I ended up going with this one, um, which I end up changing back to the first one. Um, I, I wanted to use this model because I thought it would save me some time because there was a parking lot there, the signs were there, it was pretty much all finished. But I decided that it was a little bit too bright for my liking, so I removed it, and I ended up going back to, you'll see it in the live mode, I ended up going back to the original, uh, the other McDonald's model, uh, which you, you'll see in the live mode. But what I was trying to do here was dress up the front of the place, give it a little bit more, like I said, of a lived-in uh, sort of feeling, put some cars down like there actually are people inside eating McDonald's and getting sick and whatever. Um, so I wanted to put the garden up front because that I, I feel like a lot of McDonald's have that kind of like little garden up front. And I know a lot of this is like, why am I wasting time with the details over here? What's the point? You're never going to come over here. You're going to be driving trains. But it helps bring everything to life. It's going to make it feel more lived-in. It's going to make it feel like a much more real-life place. Um, and now here I'm going next door to the gas station. I'm going to place down a couple more vehicles over here to, tr again, just try to make it feel like that there's a truck driver here. He stopped here to deliver some stuff. He's parked here for the night. He's taking the night off. Who knows? Um, I put a couple guys at the gas pump. Um, I'd like to add some people in here, but um, trains doesn't really have a whole lot of really good people assets, and they're kind of small. So I don't know. Maybe I'll come back and add some of that in. So I'm always looking for the right details to divide out scenes. Each place has its own little scene. I use that little sidewalk there to divide out the post office from the gas station. Uh, here I'm trying to add a little bit of texture to it, a little bit of texture to the ground. What you'll notice is that I do a lot of copying and pasting uh, throughout this series. And the reason I do this is not because I'm lazy. It's just because that Trains doesn't have a way to favorite the, the assets that you use. So what I do is I copy and paste my trees and certain things and then I rearrange them so that way I'm always using the same assets and uh, I don't have to search for them every time and try to figure out which ones I'm using or accidentally use different ones that don't match what I've been doing, the theme that I've been using. So I do a lot of copying and pasting um, and then I'll go through and kind of cull things. Again, adding these little details is going to make it feel so much more lived in, so much better. Instead of just plopping that diner down like it was, you know, suddenly it feels like 
there's somebody there taking out the trash and somebody who's lazy there's papers laying around it, it feels more alive it feels more lived in and nighttime mode a lot of people neglect nighttime mode uh, i like to come in make sure that the lights look good um, oh so here here i struggle with the roads a little bit maybe somebody out there has a recommendation for how to get these roads to connect there's no intersection so you get this kind of clipping thing that doesn't look natural i don't know I tried using the yarn system, but I thought that the roads were a little bit too thick, a little bit too big. So I didn't really, I kind of replaced them with these roads because they looked a little bit more natural, a little bit more real. But maybe there's an intersection out there or a trick that I don't know that one of you guys knows. So maybe somebody let me know down in the comments section would be great. But one thing I'd like to point out is that I've been working on this route since about 2009. And because I started this route so long ago, a lot has changed. And a lot of my work that I've done has actually, is gone. It, it got lost between moving from Trains 2009 to Trains 2010 to 2012 and now into Trains A New Era. A lot of the assets broke, a lot of things I had to redo. In fact, this whole town, this whole area was totally completed. And you'll notice that there's some areas where the textures, you could see um, that grid pattern underneath is showing through. It's because some of the textures disappeared. They don't work anymore. So I had to come back through. This is like the 20th time probably that I've had to come through this town and, and redo it again and again and again. So hopefully this will be the last time because I'm using all new assets and making sure nothing is broken. I hope it, it works. Uh, one of the comments in my last video was about uh, wanting to see more track laying. And again, because I started this route so long ago, pretty much all of the track for the whole thing has been laid. Um, the only track laying that we're probably going to be doing is when we uh, try to fix up an industrial area. Um, like just outside of town here, there's a big oil refinery. That's gonna be our next episode. I'm gonna relay a little bit of track because it's a little bit simple for my liking at this point. Um, so we're gonna redo that area. That's gonna be a whole nother episode. We'll do a little bit of track laying there. Um, but for the most part, all of the track has been laid. Um, we're gonna be mostly focusing on detailing and uh, getting the route to actually look more, more like a real place. So I said on my Instagram and on my Twitter that I would do a shout out to my first 10 followers on Instagram, so I'd like to list them off right now. Brockerville Railfan, John F. I. V. Rail Ohio, Chris Kramer Photography, SP4449 Guy, Custom Trains, Gary RS6616, Trains Sim, and Yochiuziki. I'll put those down in the comments. Thanks for the subs, guys, on Instagram. If you're not following me, um, definitely give me a follow there. I'd love to give shout outs more often to people who follow me on Twitter, on Instagram, um, and also here on YouTube. So if you drop me a comment, I'll, uh, I'll shoot you a shout out in the next episode. Now I'd like to get into the live mode and we'll talk a little bit about future plans and uh, some of the other stuff that I missed here in the time lapse. Welcome to live mode, everybody. Here we are in front of the McDonald's that I redid two or three times at least. So here's the new model. This one is by BNSF 50, oh, excuse me. The McDonald's is by Ronin13. And the signs and the drive-through over here are by BNSF 50. Great models, great models indeed. I found that these were much, uh, the coloring was much more subdued and much more real life uh, to what I've seen than the bright red and bright yellow McDonald's that I had in there. So I ripped out the old one, I put this one in. It's much bigger, so I had to redo the parking lot, I had to redo where all the cars were. Um, but I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Again, I put some details back here, some trash to make it look like there's workers there. So I spent a little bit of time on it, added a couple little signs, and again, just all this little stuff. I know I've said it a million times. All this little stuff, like these signs here, it just makes it that much more realistic. It makes it feel more like there's people here actually doing stuff. One thing I do want to point out also about Old Town is um, the way that I have these crossings set up. So these are the triggers that trigger the, the signal to go off and cars to stop. And you'll notice that, if I can get to it, they're all very close. And what I was going for here is that Old, Old Town doesn't get a whole lot of freight traffic. Trains come through here maybe once a week. So I wanted it to feel like the tracks were almost partially abandoned. I have it set up in such a way that the engines have to do what's called stop and flag. So the engine can creep up, the conductor hops out, flags the crossing, or turns on the signals, or whatever, set, throws out a flare, whatever it might be, but it's called stop and flag, and that's the effect that I wanted to get. The other thing that I wanted to achieve by, by doing this is that because the railroad tracks cross pretty much every main road in Old Town, 
I wanted there to be a rule where there was no blocking the crossings. So any train that pulls in here, well, actually the rule is that there's no blocking the crossings for uh, exceeding 10 minutes, I think is what Bill M. had in his rule book. So any time a train is maybe switching out Lumber Place here, they have to break their train up so that the gates go up and traffic can flow through. So I wanted to also keep it really nice and close so that the, uh, the traffic can continue to flow through. So I figured I'll take you guys right through Old Town, right off of the main line. This isn't really technically the main line, this is the Vani branch, and this is the Old Town spur off of the Vani branch. So this is where it exits the Vani branch. First road, second road, third road. I can't tell how framey this might be looking to you guys. So we'll go slow. Okay, so it's a nice little town. And as we exit town, we head up a slight grade. And again, I did um, some work off camera. I uh, finished off a lot of this area. And I plan on finishing off more of this area before we get into our next episode. The next episode is going to be to to uh, fix up this whole oil refinery here. Like I said, I did this several years ago. Probably laid this down in 2009. Very simple. Just wanted to have some kind of operational purpose to it. I'm going to redo this whole thing. We're going to lay some new track and we're going to make it a little bit more um, industrial looking. Um, but the main track through Old Town continues off in this direction. We go across the little bridge, which I like. And then we head back further. We got a double track. This is really just a runaround track before we come up to a dead end down here. I'm actually thinking in the future that I might expand this track a little bit further down and make it sort of like a tourist railroad, tourist excursion sort of thing. Um, but that won't be until I get much more done. Um, but that's the idea for now. Once we're done with this whole area, we're going to move on further down the Vani branch. I'll give you a little taste of what's next. Um, we're going to head down the Vani branch, which heads this direction. Uh, there's a little farm here. We're definitely going to redo that, but I think the next stop after Old Town is going to be my favorite town, which is Vani. And I really love this place, and it is definitely in need of a little bit more detail work. And I think we're going to have some fun here. I love Vani. I think it's just got this really cool small town feel to it, even smaller than Old Town. So we're going to come check that out in the next episode. So if you haven't already, head on over to my Instagram and give me a follow on Instagram at Approach Medium or on Twitter, again, Approach Medium. And uh, give me a sub here, drop me a link, drop me a comment. I'd love to give you a shout out if you have a, a channel, if you're a photographer, if you're a videographer. Um, let me know, leave me a comment somewhere and I will give you a shout out in my next video. All right, so I'm glad you guys joined me for this one and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.